Let me ask you about GPT-4. There's so many questions. Uh, first of all, also amazing. It's looking back, it'll probably be this kind of historic pivotal moment with three, five, and four, which had GPT. Maybe five will be the pivotal moment. I don't know. <laughs> hard to say that looking forwards. We never know. That's the annoying thing about the future. It's hard to predict. But for me, looking back, GPT-4, Chad GPT is pretty damn impressive, like historically impressive. So allow me uh, to ask, what's been the most impressive capabilities of GPT-4 to you and GPT-4 Turbo? I think it kind of sucks. Hmm. Typical human also. Gotten it's... used to an awesome thing. No, I think it is an amazing thing, um, but relative to where we need to get to and where I believe we will get to, uh, you know, at the time of like GPT-3, people were like, oh, this is amazing. This is this like marvel of technology. And it is, it was. Uh, but, you know, now we have GPT-4 and you look at GPT-3 and you're like, that's unimaginably horrible. Um I expect that the delta between five and four will be the same as between four and three. And I think it is our job to live a few years in the future and remember that the tools we have now are going to kind of suck looking backwards at them. And that's how we make sure the future is better. What are the most glorious ways in that GPT-4 sucks? Meaning... Uh, what are the best things it can do? What are the best things it can do in the the limits of those best things that allow you to say it sucks, therefore gives you an inspiration and hope for the future. You know, one thing I've been using it for more recently is sort of a, like a brainstorming partner. Yep. And I love it for that. there's a glimmer of something amazing in there. I don't think it gets, you know, when people talk about it, it what it does, they're like, oh, it helps me code more productively. It helps me write more faster and better. It helps me, you know, translate from this language to another. All these like amazing things, but there's something about the like kind of creative brainstorming partner. I need to come up with a name for this thing. I need to like think about this problem in a different way. I'm not sure what to do here. Uh, that I think like gives a glimpse of something I hope to see more of. Um, one of the other things that you can see like a very small glimpse of is when I can help on longer horizon tasks, you know, break down something into multiple steps, maybe like execute some of those steps, search the internet, write code, whatever, put that together. Uh, when that works, which is not very often, it's like very magical. The iterative back and forth with a human. Well, it works a lot for me. What do you mean? It uh, when, iterative back and forth with a human, it can get more often, but when it can go do like a 10 step problem on its own. Oh. It doesn't work for that too often, sometimes. At multiple layers of abstraction, or do you mean just sequential? Both, like, you know, to break it down and then do things at different layers of abstraction and put them together. Look, I don't want to, I don't want to, like, downplay the accomplishment of GPT-4, mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to overstate it either. And I think this point that we are on an exponential curve, we will look back relatively soon at GPT-4, like we look back at GPT-3 now. That said, I mean, Chad GPT was a transition to where people like started to believe it. There was a kind of, there is an uptick of believing, not sure, internally at OpenAI sure, perhaps, sure. there's believers here, but when you think And in global, that sense, I do think it'll be a moment where a lot of the world went from not believing to believing. Um, that was more about the chat GPT interface than the, and, and by the interface sure. and product, I also mean the post-training of the model and how we tune it to be helpful to you and, how to use it than the underlying model itself. How much of those two, uh, each of those things are important? The underlying model and the RLHF or something of that nature that tunes it to be more compelling to the human, more uh, effective and productive for the human. I mean, they're, they're both super important, but the, the, the RLHF, the post-training step, the you know little wrapper of things that from a compute perspective, little wrapper of things that we do on top of the base model, even though it's a huge amount of work. Mm -hmm. That's really important to say nothing of the product that we build around it. Um, you know, in some sense, like, we did have to do two things. We had to invent the underlying technology, and then we had to figure out 
how to make it into a product people would love, which is not just about the actual product work itself, but this whole other step of how you align it and make it useful. And how you make the scale work where a lot of people can use it at the same time, all that kind of stuff. And that. But, you know, that was like a known difficult thing. Like we knew we were going to have to scale it up. We had to go do two things that had like never been done before uh, that were both like, I would say, quite significant achievements. And then a lot of things like scaling it up that other companies have had to do before. How does the the context window of going from 8K to 128K tokens compare from the from, from GPT-4 to, to GPT-4 Turbo? People like long, most people don't need all the way to 128 most of the time, although, you know, if we dream into the distant future, we'll have like, like way distant future, mm -hmm. we'll have like context length of several billion, you will feed in all of your information, all of your history over time, and it'll just get to know you better and better, and that'll be great. For now, uh, the way people use these models, they're not doing that. And, you know, people sometimes post in a paper or, you know, a significant fraction of a code repository, or whatever. Um, but most usage of the models is not using the long context most of the time. I like that this is your I have a dream speech. <laughs> One day you'll be judged by the full context of your character or of your whole lifetime. That's interesting. So like that's part of the expansion that you're hoping for is a greater and greater context. There's this, I saw this internet clip once. I'm going to get the numbers wrong, but it was like Bill Gates talking about the amount of memory on some early computer maybe 64K, maybe 640K, something like that. And most of it was used for the screen buffer. Hmm. And he just couldn't seem genuine. This couldn't imagine that the world would eventually need gigabytes of memory in a computer or terabytes of memory in a computer. Um, and you always do. Or you always do just need to like follow the exponential of technology. And, and we're going to like, we will find out how to use better technology. So I can't really imagine what it's like right now for context links to go out to the billions someday. And they might not literally go there, but effectively it'll feel like that. Um, but I know we'll use it and really not want to go back once we have it. Yeah, even saying billions 10 years from now might seem dumb because it'll be like trillions upon trillions. Sure. There'll be some kind of breakthrough that will effectively feel like infinite context. But even 120, I, I have to be honest, I haven't, pushed it to that degree, <laughs> maybe putting in entire books or like parts of books and so on, papers. What are some interesting use cases of GPT-4 that you've seen? The thing that I find most interesting is not any particular use case that we can talk about those, but it's people who kind of like, this is mostly younger people, but people who use it as like their default start for any kind of knowledge work task. Yeah, And it's the fact that it can do a lot of things reasonably well. You can use GPTV. You can use it to help you write code. You can use it to help you do search. You can uh, use it to like edit a paper. The most interesting thing to me is the people who just use it as the start of their workflow. I do as well for for many things. Like uh, I use it as a uh, a reading partner for reading books. It helps me think. Help me think through ideas, especially when the books are classic. So it's really well written about, and it actually is as. I find it often to be significantly better than even like Wikipedia on well-covered topics. It's somehow more balanced and more nuanced. Or maybe it's me, but it inspires me to think deeper than a Wikipedia article does. I'm not exactly sure what that is. You mentioned like this collaboration. I'm not sure where the magic is, if it's in here or if it's in there, or if it's somewhere in between, I'm not sure. Uh, but one of the things that concerns me for knowledge task when I start with GPT is I'll usually have to do fact checking after, like ch check that it didn't come up with fake stuff. How, how do you figure that out? That you know GPT can come up with fake stuff that sounds really convincing. So how do you ground it in truth? That's obviously an area of intense interest for us. Uh, I think it's going to get a lot better with upcoming versions but we'll have to continue you know, to work on it and we're not gonna have it like all solved this year. Well, the scary thing is like, as it gets better, you'll start not doing the fact checking more and more, right? I, I'm of two minds about that. I think people are like much more sophisticated users of technology than sure. we often give them credit for. 
And people seem to really understand that GPT, any of these models hallucinate some of the time. And if it's mission critical, you got to check it. Except journalists don't seem to understand that. I've seen journalists half-assedly just using GPT-4. It's, it's of the long list of things I'd like to dunk on journalists for, this is not my top criticism of them. Well, I think the bigger c criticism is pr perhaps the pressures and the incentives of being a journalist is that you have to work really quickly and this is a shortcut. I'd, I would love our society to incentivize like... I would too. A long, like a journalist, journalistic efforts that take days and weeks and and rewards great in-depth journalism. Also journalism that presents stuff in a balanced way where it's like celebrates people while criticizing them, even though the criticism is the thing that gets clicks and making shit up also gets clicks and headlines that mischaracterize completely. I'm sure you have a lot of people dunking on, well, all that drama probably got a lot of clicks. Probably did. Uh, and that, that's that, you know, that's a, bigger problem about human civilization I'd love to see solved is where we celebrate a bit more.